Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. I'm real excited because today we're gonna be talking about how to properly socialize your dogs. I'm here today with Dee Dee from Dog Tag Buddies and they train service dogs for our veterans. Now she's gonna be explaining to you guys the process that she does and how they make sure they set their dogs up for success as well as their veterans. So when we talk about socialization, I think most people interpret that as I'm going to take my puppy out and I'm going to have everybody touch my puppy and I'm going to let my puppy play with all the other dogs. In reality, that's not what socialization is for us. What that means is we're exposing the dog to a variety of different situations of flooring material, of people, of any kind of novel situation that the dog might be experiencing as they train to be a service dog. It's really important that these dogs get comfortable in any environment so that they can do the obedience and the tasks that they're trained to do with their veteran in mind. If they aren't focused on their veteran, then they're really not doing the job that they're trained to do. So I think that's, that's where we go when we start talking about socialization. Definitely, and what are some of the training <laughs> exercises that your trainers or even yourself, what you do with the dog to help prepare them to be with the veteran? Or what are some of the things that you have the veterans do with their dogs in order to get them more comfortable being in these environments while still making sure the obedience is there and the dog is doing the tasks that are necessary for that veteran? Both as, a tra as trainers when we have the dogs and when the dogs are paired with their veterans, taking the dogs out to places that are pet friendly. So we have a lot of local stores here in Montana that allow pets. So we have you know, ranch supply stores, we have hardware stores, we have um, hunting and fishing stores. So they can take those dogs out to those different environments. And sometimes it's as, it's as slow as taking the dog out of the vehicle, walking them through the parking lot and putting them back in the car. It's not a full on let's go shopping because a lot of dogs, they're not ready for that up front. So making sure that we're doing it in a slow, calculated manner so that we don't traumatize these dogs before they even start the process. By doing too much too, too much fast. Too soon. Yep. And we were talking a little bit earlier about one of the biggest problems that veterans or anybody who has a service dog and they're going out in public is everybody wants to go up and pet a service dog. And when we have a service dog and we're working with it, either as a trainer or as the person with a disability, we have to tell somebody like, no, I'm sorry, the dog is currently working. And a lot of times people don't really understand why. Why can't I pet that service dog? It's so cute, it's a dog, it's meant to be pet. Well, there are reasons for this and I really love the way that you explained earlier and how you tell children why it's important not to pet somebody's service dog. So I'd love if you can explain that to the audience as well. So when I go and do presentations to little kids, little kids seem to understand it. Uh, when we talk about people with service dogs, we may not know why that individual has that service dog, but one of the things that you have to be aware of is if I'm disturbing this dog and the handler is standing there and maybe they have a seizure disorder. If they start to have a seizure and that dog can't focus on the handler, they could potentially have a seizure and fall and hit their head. We're talking about a life and death situation here. So it's not fair for me to interrupt that dog. That dog has a job to do. And little kids seem to understand that concept when you tell them, hey, this dog is working and here's what can happen. Um, it's a lot easier to explain it to them and then they go explain it to their parents and their parents go, oh, I get it. So it's kind of that aha moment mm -hmm. and it comes through the children, which I really like. It's funny that you say that because when I do basic just dog training lessons with a family, some reason the children always do way better than the adults do. And I have to reassure everyone, it's normal. The kids just pick up the information for some reason much faster and they're able to start applying it right away. But yeah, and that's very important. When a dog is out, a service dog is working, their responsibility has to be on the person with the disability. They can't be distracted by everything else going on and that's why that socialization and exposure to new environments and new distractions is so important in the training process. Now there's a simple training plan we like to follow when socializing our dogs. And it's the same process that I use whether I'm training a service dog or the family pet. There's a few variables that you wanna keep in mind during your dog socializing process. This includes the levels of the tasks, levels of obedience, levels of proficiency, and the intensity of the environment, which includes training your dog's social skills. For your convenience, I place this entire breakdown in the description of the video. And if you follow this simple process, you'll be able to train your dog to behave with other dogs and humans, as well as responding to your commands in all environments. Yep, I would agree. All right, thanks everybody for watching today. Thank you, Dee Dee, for giving me the opportunity to come down here and work with you guys. 
make sure you guys check them out. They have a website. Again, it's dogtagbuddies.org. Yes. And then they're on Facebook as well. So they're doing a lot of great things. They're really helping our veterans out, the veterans that have done so much for us. So thanks again for watching, guys. Please make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again.